Hey guys, how's things? <laughs> oh my gosh. So <clears throat> I, I seriously appreciate all of your guys' comments so much yesterday from my making my own scrap paper video, scrapbook paper video it was really, really nice. I guess I just, you know, I didn't realize that the, the rest of the world kind of felt like, um, what's the word cabin fever, you know, and someone called it uh, COVID itis. And, um, I guess part of my thing is so my uh, feelings are so politically, uh, rooted that it's just, I finally just, I just had to turn off the news. You know, I, I'm just to the point where, I don't know, I'm ready to just secede from, <laughs> from the nation. I just want to become my own government and whatever. <laughs> anyway, so <clears throat> hopefully things will change in November. That's all I can say. Anyway, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys really, I, truly 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 mean it that i appreciate you very very much and uh really did make me feel better you know just to know that you guys are all kind of right along the same lines so so yeah love my i love my viewers i just love them i love you guys so a uh, couple things first of all i have to say congratulations lisa jameson um, she is the winner of the, <laughs> of the contest. I know a lot of people probably didn't even pick it up, but I really meant it when I said, if you could tell me the, um, I was talking about my new cat that I got. Her name was Ju Her name is Judith. And, um, it, my other cat's name is Jimmy and just, she got it like <laughs> so i had asked a couple videos back who could tell me um if you could tell me the significance of me naming her judith um that i would send you something special so i am going to be sending lisa something super special and i'll tell you guys what the correlation was she did get it it's in the comments a couple videos back um so i'm a huge tool fan a perfect circle Pussifer fan. I love Maynard James Keenan. And, um, if you don't know who he is, uh, just Google him. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so I'm a huge tool fan and I feel lucky enough that I was able to see tool in, um, early March, March 9th before the lockdown kind of hit Washington state. And, you know, right before they decided, um, not to continue their tour and the, the the coolest thing about it is that they hadn't put out an album for like 11 years or 12 years or something and so all of the tool fans in the world have been waiting for this you know this album and they finally released the album well they did a european tour and then <clears throat> their very first stop on their u.s tour was in spokane washington and I got to go see him. And I got to see him with my son, Sebastian, who you guys might have seen in the kitchen video. Um, and it's it's just, I don't know, it was just a really, really amazing um, thing that I was able to, to see him. They did one other show after that in Oregon, and then they canceled the rest of their tour. So, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I got to see him. <laughs> so, and who knows when they're going to be able to tour again, you know. Anyway, so... Um, anyway, so Jimmy is a song by Tool and, um, Jimmy is also Maynard James Keenan. So it's like his middle name and Judith is Maynard James Keenan's mother. So, and they also have, well, a perfect circle. He's a singer for three different bands, but, um, a perfect circle, uh, has a song called Judith. So anyway, that was what it was. So congratulations, Lisa. I got something picked out. I'm going to send you. So anyway, ramble, ramble for five minutes. So I've been wanting to do a video today all day. It's now 
like 11 o'clock and just one thing after another kept happening. My son Adrian came over, which was really cool. I got to see him. He is here in Spokane uh, for the summer and um, we thought we were going to be able to hang out more, but he's been working a lot more than he expected. So he's in the Air National Guard. And um, so anyway, <clears throat> so it's really nice to be able to see him. And then, so I was going to continue working on the scrapbook paper. <laughs> um, but, you know, doing some additional stuff on these. I wound up doing this many, like a ton, right? So I feel like I have a, a whole, like, new stack of scrapbook paper you know all I did was just glued um stuff on it you know papers that I love I just you know after a while it's like you have to stop hoarding your stuff you just have to use it you know um it doesn't do any good sitting in a bag or a box or a folder or a drawer you know, you, you, you bought it because you loved it and you bought it because you wanted to use it. So use it, um, doesn't, and, and I'm talking to myself here too. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to lecture you do whatever you want, but, um, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yes, it's special. It's, um, it was not cheap. A lot of it. Um, but, if I don't use it, I just feel like there's no point in even having it, you know? I mean, I, of course I use, I do put stuff into bundles and I use a lot of stuff in journals and, you know, but at, at some point it's like, I have to tell myself, you've got to use this stuff or it just doesn't make any sense that you bought it or found it or whatever. Um, anyway, so so I'm going to, what I think I'm going to do with this, instead of trying to, um, trying to do the same thing with all of these pages, like I did with these two, these are the only two that I've kind of almost like finished, but not really like, cause these are going to get cut up and used for all kinds of different things. Um, but instead of taking all of these papers to this point, I decided that I will just kind of keep these in my stash and I will just use these as if it's just scrapbook paper and then I'll decide what I want to do with it as time goes by. You know what I mean? So some of this stuff I will make into tags and some I will, you know, use in other projects. Uh, I might even make some journal covers out of some of this stuff. Um, and one thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to spray the backs of all of these with some um, coffee, uh, just like a really diluted coffee, just to kind of take, just to kick down that white a little bit, you know, kind of vintage them up a little bit. Um, some of them have patterns on the back, so, you know, that's cool. And I tried to, um, in determining, like these were double-sided you know, papers. So I chose the side that I actually liked, um, as the back on some of them. Some of them I don't particularly love, but they're not terrible. So, you know, um, I mean, I bought the paper because I like the paper anyway, right? Although, you know, there's always a lot of sheets in each pack that you don't really like. Anyway, so I'm going to use some of this stuff. Um, I'm just going to use it as, as if it were a stack of scrapbook paper and determine what I'm going to do with it as I, as I go along through my crafty journey. So, um, I came across this pocket. Um, I don't even know where it came from. It was in a, you know, somewhere. Um, and I've seen a lot of pockets made like this, uh, and I saved this one because I wanted to just use it as my sort of like template um, and make some more pockets because I want to do some like this. And I have a bunch of things that I would like to make these out of um, because I've got this other hoard of 
stuff that I always want to include in journals and a lot of it is great like for um, for clusters and stuff but you know there's just all of these little little bits like little little things yeah a lot of it is you know like original ephemera um, but some of it is stuff that I printed and you know cut out little game cards and just you know just all kinds of little things little tickets um, Tracy sent me these um, you know tea cards little tickets little Tim Holtz die cut things just just a bunch of little teeny little things you know and I want to make these little pockets just so that when I make a little when I make a journal I can just put a little assortment of different little pieces of ephemera in these you know so that the owner of the journal has a place to store their little tiny bits and I have a place that I can share them um, that's attached to the journal instead of just like in a little glassine envelope or something like that so these are great there's I, I've seen like like I said I've seen lots of people make these but I've never made any so I want to do that and I thought this would be great to use some of that paper and um, also, I have another hoard of, sorry I keep bumping the desk, you guys. I've got to mount my, I have to remount my camera from the ceiling. It's This is not working. Got a bunch of postcards. Um, I've kind of sorted them out into postcards that have writing on the backs. And, well, <laughs> most of them. Um, they have writing on the back that I like, okay? And um, so, you know, I, I mean, some of them I like the front too, but mostly I like the backs of them, okay? Um, <clears throat> then there's others where, you know, it's like I don't like anything about it really, except for this would be great to glue something on the front and then just make this a tag in a journal, you know? But anyway, so all these postcards and... So I want to make some of these little pockets using postcards as as the back, okay? So like my little pockets will go right across the front. And I realize I'm going to be covering up a lot of the postcard, but that's okay. Like you can still see that it's a postcard and you can see that little strip across the top. So if I don't do something with them, I'm never going to use them. So I think I want to do that with some of these postcards. And then I've also got a bunch of these, um, these really old French postcards that are kind of fragile. Um, they, they're sort of brittle, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I thought these would work nicely as the little pockets if I back them with just a thin piece of paper you know uh, we'll see they might not be that fragile I have to kind of test one and, and see how it see how it goes um, but I did a little prototype just just to kind of see um, how this was gonna go now I am gonna do a series of readers digest and yes I'm gonna do clusters also I promise um, but I am going to do a new series of Reader's Digest journals, and I would like to have two of these for each journal. I'd like to have one in the front cover and one for the back cover. So, this one's a little bit too wide to have it positioned that way, and it really won't work to even put it sideways. So this one's a little bit too big, but that's okay. I just wanted to make one and see how I felt about it and um, kind of, you know, just put together some of my ideas about what I wanted to do. Um, anyway, so this is a postcard and it's the full, you know, it's the full width of the postcard without the this little thing. Okay, 
so and then I just cut it into three little strips to make these pockets so these um, let me find something I can tuck in there real quick so these are shallow like they don't it doesn't go like this pocket is only that deep right um, and what am I trying to say oh okay <laughs> so using this one image um, in order to make it easier to tuck things in to the, the second and third pocket it needs to kind of overlap the one that's just above it right like it does on like they do on here you know these just kind of barely overlap so I thought well that's going to be weird to do that with an image if you want to still recognize the image but then I thought no this is a junk journal it doesn't matter like you can distort it a little bit and it still looks okay so so I did that and I kind of overlapped these just slightly you know just enough so that you're able to um, so you're able to to slide something in there and um, just makes it easier I like to think about making things user friendly when you know for my journals so anyway so that's that's what I think I'm gonna do um, where to start I think the first I'll just do I'll just make one and we'll do we'll just do one oh 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 here's the other thing <laughs> sorry I know I'm kind of all over the place so I have also printed off a ton of different um, these are all ledger pages that I have for sale in my Etsy shop and these are just the pages that I've printed off to kind of show them like on a video to say hey I have these for sale in my shop so I still have all of these and I'd like to use them okay um, <clears throat> because they're not doing any good just sitting in a drawer right um, so all of these are listed in my shop just just so you know this is the French ledger um, and then this is like the there's a there's a really cool one in there I don't know if, if a lot of you guys have have purchased it but um, if you haven't looked at the digitals that I have in my Etsy shop go check them out because this ledger that this came from is absolutely amazing like it is just gorgeous it's a math book so I think there's two listings for the math pages and then there's another one that's from the same ledger that's actually a day book and um, it's really really cool and it prints beautifully with a laser printer or an inkjet printer as long as you're using paper that goes with either or you know you don't want to use paper that's made for an inkjet in a laser printer and you don't want to use paper that's made for a laser printer in an inkjet printer you, or you can use paper that's made for both but um, but that's something to, to pay attention to um, if you're getting weird color shifts and things like that when you're printing stuff just saying um, and then there's just all this other stuff like all these like collages and stuff this stuff is all in my Etsy shop so <clears throat> so I want to use some of these because you know it was perfectly good toner and ink that I printed these with on perfectly good paper that I paid good money for so I want to try to use some of these also so what I'm gonna do is just grab another piece of ugly scrapbook paper that I don't necessarily want to use and I'm just gonna I'm just going to glue a page, one of these pages of ledger onto this. Now this is like uh, like very lightweight cardstock weight 
uh, scrapbook paper and it's single side. Actually, hold on. I'm going to use... I'm going to use one of these. I love this French ledger. I'm so glad that I scanned it because I have almost used all of it now for different things, different collages probably. Anyway, oh, and then a few people asked me about the Amazon Basics glue sticks. And all I can say is that they are consistent and they uh they stick really well like um i've never had anything lift after i've stuck it down you know um and it's in it they're consistently um like the texture of the actual glue is always the same like it's not it's not super soft and it's not super hard um and i think it's a really good value for the amount of glue that you get in each stick uh 1.27 ounces the um the blick glue sticks that i bought were a little bit larger and i did love them and i still love them but they weren't as consistent as these are. Um, a lot of the dick, the the Blick uh, glue sticks, um, some of them were really soft, and they got like really messy and like globby when you when you use it, you know. So they're not my favorite anymore. But so I've decided that <clears throat> um, the Amazon Basics glue sticks are my favorite now because of the value um, and the consistency and yeah um, <laughs> I used to be in love with the Elmer's all-purpose glue sticks and I still love them but they're not as good a value they're, it's the same size glue stick, but they average about a dollar a stick or a dollar ten or so. And they don't sell them at Joann's anymore. And so I have to buy them like on, on Amazon or something like that. And the Amazon Basics ones are cheaper. So, so that's why they're my favorite. And somebody asked if I like these better than... Um, than these, <clears throat> than the Scotch permanent glue sticks. So I will tell you that my other favorite glue stick is um, the Scotch Create glue stick. It's a huge glue stick. It's bigger than this one. It's like twice the size of this one. I don't think I have any right now. Yeah, I'm out of them. But it looks like this. Like the, the tube looks like that, except for <laughs> this one says repositionable. So this is the wrong one. Don't get the repositionable one. Um, <clears throat> but I like, so the Scotch Create glue sticks are pretty much exactly the same glue as the Scotch Permanent glue stick, but it's a big fat glue stick. So, um, so I like these because these are, first of all, if you if you do the math, um, these are 0.28 ounces on Amazon. You can get 18 of these for a lot cheaper than what it would cost to buy those big giant ones. Um, it just works out to be a better value as far as the amount of glue that you get. But also these smaller ones are easier to apply on smaller items. I still like the big ones because, well, it's easier to apply a lot of glue onto something um, with a bigger glue stick, obviously. But um, I use these when I need to apply glue on a large piece, right? Oh my God, this is turning into a glue stick video. 
but <clears throat> I use this for fabric stuff or things that are not paper to paper. You know, if it's paper to paper, I use this. Um, if it's something weird like rickrack or pom pom trim or, you know, so something fabric, um, I trust these. I trust this glue over this glue. I think this is better glue overall than, than these, but this is more expensive than this. So, um, it's hard to explain, but if, if you buy some of these, you'll see it's, it's a different type of glue. Like, like this glue is very, um, it's just, it's more gluey, you know, it's more like, like glue that would come out of a tube almost in stick form. And it's, it's very strong. So, so those, um, but these are awesome for paper. They're awesome for collage and that kind of stuff. So the Amazon basic glue, basics glue sticks are the bomb. Um, second choice would be these, the Scotch permanent glue stick for fabric type stuff. But then uh, the Elmer's all purpose glue stick would be my second choice on paper applications. And then the Blick Art Materials uh, glue sticks. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, is that it? for the? I had another question that I wanted to answer. Um, I'm kind of trying to let this dry just a little bit too. Um, and somebody asked me if I could scan some of those collage papers that I did uh, over the last couple days. And the answer is... No, because, <laughs> because I don't know if all the stuff in that collage is copyright free and I just don't feel like hassling with finding out, you know what I mean? Um, not that I think, you know, the copyright police are going to come after me, but they might, you never know, like you just never know. Anyway, okay, so I want to use this postcard and I'm going to use this as my background for my little pocket, okay? And then I need to find out what what the width needs to be so I can use these in my Reader's Digests. So let's see. I want to have at least like a quarter inch border or something because I'll probably do a hitch post closure. And I don't want the edge of the pocket to come all the way up to the edge of the cover. So I'm going to say, I'll say four and I think we could get away with like four and a quarter, like four and a quarter inches. Okay. So that's going to be, that's going to be our width. And so I'm just going to cut. I don't know how this is going to cut when it's wet. It's still a little damp. Not too bad. Okay. And then I want it to be a little bit a little bit taller than this one because because I want you to be able to see a little bit of the of this too, you know. Um so what's the height on this? So let's just go, well, how tall is my postcard? Hold on. That's what I need to know. So let's go. Might as well just make them square, right? Or let's go like four and a half. Let's make these four and a half tall. So they'll be slightly taller than they are wide. This might not work with the with those postcards because I feel like I'm going to be cutting off too much of the postcard, you know, on the edges. I don't know. Yeah, it'll probably work. It'll probably work.
All right. So what was it? Four and a quarter, right? So let's see. I'm just going to cut this edge off there. And then I don't mind cutting off. I'm going to cut a little bit off of each side. Okay. So I'm going to go like that and then do this one to four and a quarter. Okay. So that's fine. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, I will do some that are put. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do one horizontal pocket and then one vertical pocket so that I can use some of these postcards that are, you know, um, vertically oriented. So then I want to cut this into three strips. So it's three and a half inches tall. So let's do this. Let's just go one inch. No, let's go one and a quarter. I'm just guessing here, you guys. One and a quarter and then one and one eighth. No, we'll do just one and a quarter again. Okay, so <clears throat> my last, my bottom strip is going to be slightly thinner than the other two, but that's okay because I'm going to be overlapping that center one anyway, just a little bit. So I think, I know I said I was going to see about the durability of these, and honestly, I think this one's okay. I don't know where these color ones came from. Honestly, I don't remember where they came from. Um, anyway, so using up a bunch of paper that I've had in a bag for forever, using up some scrapbook paper that I don't really like, using up some postcards that I've had forever. I'm feeling pretty good about this, you guys. And considering I probably have to make, I don't know, <laughs> like 40 of them. Um, this is good. Oh, and then I also have a bunch of score tape that I haven't used for so long because I just don't really make greeting cards anymore. And that's the only thing I ever really used it for. So this is the 1 8 inch. Um, I have to make sure I put this on the bottom. This is the 1 8 inch score tape. It's a double sided tape if you've never seen it. Uh, it's very strong double sided tape. Okay, so I'm putting my score tape along the bottom of each one of these little strips. And I'm going to burnish it down a little bit just to make sure that it sticks really well. And also you want to score it. You want to burnish this down because um, when you go to peel the backing off, it's really easy, especially with old paper like this, it's really easy to actually tear the paper off like the whole thing and not just the backing, you know? Okay. So we have to go, we have to kind of decide how, where to put that top pocket. So I, I'm always eyeballing everything. So, okay. So I think right about there, right? Cause we made this like an inch taller than the height of the postcard. So, so right about, right about there, I'm just going to kind of remember like right under that word right there. Okay. So I'm going to use my And I just did the strip across the bottom because I'm going to do a piece of tape along the sides to hold the sides down. Or I might just stitch it on the sewing machine to hold, uh, to hold the sides down. Okay, I think the sewing machine. Although I really don't like sewing through 
that score tape with my sewing machine because it really gums up the needle. But it's such a thin little piece of glue or, or of tape. I don't think it'll make a huge difference, but I'll try it and see. Okay, so see, it's going to kind of squish that little castle a little bit when I overlap that a little tiny bit. But I don't think it makes that huge of a difference. I really don't. And I mean, who cares, right? But I do want it to overlap just a little bit. And if I get this a little bit crooked, it's because I can't put my head right over the picture or else my head will be in the camera, right? Okay. Oh, this might be, yeah, I'm going to have to cut a little bit off the bottom. But that's okay. So with something like scenery, um, I think it works pretty well, like, you know, overlapping just ever so slightly. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. Did I do that upside down? No. Okay, good. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I don't think it really looks that, that bad, you know? <laughs> anyway, so let me just trim this off. Whenever I'm kind of making up something like this as I go, like, I figure out, my little like shortcuts and little little tricks and things like that like I might need to make some kind of template or something so that I make sure I place that top one um, at the right at the right you know height as long as I keep using the same thing like if I keep using postcards but um, anyway so yeah so then I'm going to, I am going to go ahead and just stitch around the edge of that. And I think I'll do a, uh, whoops, did it come unplugged? Yep. I think I'm going to do a zigzag. And I might just go all the way around the whole border. And I'm going to do kind of a wide-ish zigzag. Um, and sometimes people ask me what, what sewing machine this is. And it is a Brother CS6000i. And um, so for the zigzag setting, it's the setting number 4, a 04, and I have it on 1.0 for the length of the stitch and 5.0 for the width. So I want my zigzag to kind of come off the edge of the paper. Um, so the needle is positioned at its most right hand like position that it's going to that's going to go to, you know. So I'm just lining my paper up with the um, the edge of my paper with where the needle is now. Okay. So that way, when it's going back and forth, the needle will go off the edge of the page. It doesn't, it's not going to hit the, the edge of the page. You'll see what I mean. Kind of have to pull it a little bit sometimes when you're stitching paper. Sometimes you do have to pull it a little bit, especially if there's glue involved. Um, so you can see what I mean. I I took the I took the stitch right off the edge of the of the the um, paper. So so I'm just gonna stitch all the way around the edges. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to call these done. So I'm going to do quite a few of those of that size. Okay. Um, and let's see. I want to do some that are more vertical too. I wish I could use these little strips for something. I don't know. I kind of like that. It has like a little palm tree on it. I might save that one. 
just for something. <clears throat> and then I also wanted to do some using some of that wallpaper. So let's see. One of these pieces of wallpaper. Um, but this is brittle. Like I, this is too thin to just, um, use this by itself for, for the little pockets. So I'm going to actually, I think I'll just glue. I think I'm just going to glue this whole piece of wallpaper onto this piece of scrapbook paper that I don't like. Um, and it will get used for lots of other things. I have really, that's those, I got two books of, um, of, uh, wallpaper samples that were both from like the early twenties. And one was Montgomery Ward's and one was, uh, Sears. And it was funny because I showed them on a little haul video that I did like last month. And it's like the only estate sale that I've been to this whole entire year. And <clears throat> I was so happy about it that I did a, a little haul. But um, if you want to see it, it's called um, like farm sale haul or something. Um, anyway, but I showed these in that haul video and somebody looked them up on eBay and left a comment on there. Those are selling for like $125 or something. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, <clears throat> I didn't buy them as an investment. I bought them to use them because I mean, you know, I mean, it's just beautiful wallpaper, you know? So anyway, oh, that kind of smeared a little bit. Got to be careful. I did kind of smear a little bit. And I really don't want to waste much of this wallpaper at all. So I've used some of it in projects. I've used some of it in some kits. Um, and I keep whittling it down to like the, the ones that I like the most. And so I just have this little stack of them now that are like my ultimate favorites out of, out of the whole, um, both books. Okay. So piece of wallpaper. Let's, let's just, we might as well just do one. Let's do one on a little bit bigger postcard. You know, so it'll just be like that. I want to do one that's more vertical. Um, and that, just gluing it onto that piece of scrapbook paper just made that a lot more sturdy, a little bit more durable. So let's see, how wide is this? That's going to be perfect for the back cover. So let's cut a strip. Let's cut a piece that is, might as well just go two and three quarter inches wide yeah two and three quarter inches wide i'll have to eyeball and then six inches long i'll have to eyeball my strips but that's okay i eyeball everything so six inches Am I okay with cutting this whole piece off like that? No, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go two and three quarters and cut this whole length because then I can use the bottom piece probably for another one. And then six inches is my width. 
I can use that for something for sure. And then I still have the whole length of this um, to use for something else. Okay, and then I'm going to cut my strips. Let's see. So we'll just go like five eight no we'll do the top one we'll do one inch whoops and then this one will just go like five eighths of an inch no seven eighths of an inch I meant ah hold on Just like slightly narrower. Okay. All right. That'll be good. I think I'm going to ink the edges of these though. Because because I am just going to ink um, just to kind of there's that really white edge in there. Okay. And then I want to try to space these out better so that I don't wind up. You know what? I don't know what I was thinking. I totally don't have to start with this one. I can start with that one because I'm not gluing the sides down. Okay. See what I mean? I start figuring things out. Wait, is that the right side? Yeah. I start figuring things out as I go. Yeah, so I wouldn't have had to cut the end of that that first one off. Because I can still just tuck this one under there, you know. Even though it is going to have score tape on it. That's okay. At least it's not glue. Oh, I forgot to trim that very edge off. Oh, well. It's okay. I'm so glad I'm finally making these. I've wanted to make these for so long. All right. And then I want to burnish this down. Burnish your score tape. It really does make a big difference. Okay, where's my thingy? Put this one just right along this bottom edge. Uh oh. <laughs> of course, I got them out of order. Okay, this is the next one. Okay, and then this one is going to go just barely under and then a little bit fiddly I will say ever so slightly fiddly but but it's cool I think it's cool ok 
Okay, so that's going to go in the back of the journal like that. And I think I will do some stitching around the edges of these also. Well, I have to do something because I have to glue these sides down, these edges down. Otherwise, um, I could just glue those, you know, just use a little bit of art glitter glue or some kind of fine tip on another glue and just, you know, just glue those. You don't even really have to glue the whole edge. You could just do the corners, you know. And the other thing I might do is actually put a um, like a photo corner on these too. Um, I have that. I don't know who made it. It might be a Martha Stewart. Yeah, it's a Martha Stewart punch. This um, photo corner punch. And do it like maybe with some, um, I have some of that Tim Holtz like metallic cardstock, you know, and that might be kind of cool to do um, some photo corners. So since this wallpaper is kind of, kind of sparkly a little bit anyway. So that's what I'm doing. And I love that this, well, I guess this isn't really the same era, but I just think this wallpaper goes really nicely with the Reader's Digest covers, you know. I don't know. It's kind of a similar era anyway. So I'll do a postcard one um, with a postcard image for, for like the front of each one. And then I'll do another one with wallpaper um, for the back. And then, you know, I don't know. I might do some other stuff too, but... Um, but that'll get me started. So make some pockets. Um, it would be kind of cool to do those little strips along the bottom of like a library pocket too. So I might do that. I don't know. I don't know. I might do some little tiny ones. But this will be really fun to fill up with all those little bits of ephemera and stuff. Little tickets and, and whatnot. Um, you know, so that when I sell the journals, then people will have like a whole collection of cool little bits that they can use in the journals. So anyway, I guess that's it for today, guys. Um, I am going to do some clusters, but I'm still kind of in paper mode. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to probably go to bed pretty soon, but I'm going to get on these tomorrow. And a bunch of people have said that they would love, yeah, this was all dusty. Um, they would love to see another like series of videos doing the Reader's Digest. So that's great. I love when you guys say like what you would like to see because sometimes it's like, I have no idea what these people want to see. <laughs> um, so I love that. If you ever have video suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and stuff because, you know, I'm totally fine with that. I love that. Actually, it helps me a lot. Um, and, and again, thank you for your lovely comments on the last video. Um, let's just all, um, put out as much positive energy as we can and hope that people make the right decision. That's all I can say. Okay. I love you guys. And uh, I will see you sooner than later. And thanks for, thanks for coming over. Okay. Bye for now.